always become something increasingly simulated, increasingly conducted via these kind of technology, virtualizing technologies, uh, simulation and modeling technologies, uh, automated technologies, so that you can build those kind of systems into you know, robotics and so on. So in some ways, a war is also something that's part of simulation rather than the other way around. And I think it is one of the kind of privileged vectors for this kind of serious training in a military context, which is also very closely related to developments in you know, computer technology and, and, and video game technology, and, and brings us a lot of the elements, um, ingredients that then end up in um, contemporary you know, digital virtual technoculture. Of course, wargaming has a very long and old tradition, um, and chess is one of the places where you know, scholarship you know, often goes to, um, to puzzle over this and to think about. Um, and the, the sort of people who developed, um, or the sort of early developments towards what became known as Kriegspiel, or you know, war, war play, or war, war gaming, in uh, 19th century Prussia, or 18th century, late 18th century Prussia, started out uh, with experimenting with um, modifying chess. You know, going to chess and going, well, chess has been used in this way for a long time, let's, let's start there and let's, let's start to work with it. So there were efforts to modify chess to make a kind of more 18th century up-to-date war game. But things, things replace them. So what we end up with in terms of um, contemporary video game kind of genres is kind of combinations of these. Um, you have the kind of more logistical, RAND corporation type of games. Um, you also have combinations of that kind of calculation with strategy and tactics. Um, you have sort of battles with some of these other movements, which are about planning, which are about uh, resourcing, about organising vectors of transportation, um, keeping your supply stocks right, um, mining and resources, feeding into war efforts and so on. So all these kinds of things become part of decision making in, in some of these sort of games. So the kind of range roughly is represented by these sort of three types of games. So Civilization is sort of your term, principally your sort of turn-based logistical kind of game really. Um, Starcraft, which is more, more sort of a pure real-time strategy game, so it's real-time. Um, you do have to develop units and so on, but it's principally organized around fighting and you have to do it in a hurry. And if um, somebody else attacks you with their complementary or opposing force, then um, you have to kind of suspend all of that and try and survive the battle as quickly as you can. Uh, Rome Total War, the Total War series, kind of a combination of the two. You can kind of sh shift between a kind of civilization base, you know, logistics, resources, um, planning, development, building up, and so on, and actual real time uh, battles. This kind of doubling of play, this kind of putting play into the loop that has something to do with gamification, I think, has a history and an archaeology. It's not, a, it's not actually a very new thing when you think about it from this kind of perspective. Um, and war planning and fighting has had an, a very important part in that sort of history and archaeology. And in fact, it still has today, perhaps uh, more so than in recent times. So if gamification is something like this, it speaks to these kind of concepts and goals and, and, and hopes. If it's something to do with new ways to teach, new ways to engage or capture attention, new ways to lead learning or some sort of exploration of a process or, or an event or something. If it's to do with learning by doing, all that kind of pedagogical discourse, that you know, learning is done by doing things, by experiencing things. Um, and to do it in a fun way is so much the better. Of course, people have a positive, you know, kind of uh, set of memories around that. Um, well, then play that, that's in the loop of the series kind of, to me, um, takes on consciously, whether it's aware of it or not, some aspects of this legacy. It has, has to sort of buy into this legacy in some way or another. It has to draw on things that come out of this legacy. One of the sort of strategy kind of documents that the the US military puts out every now and then, I think it's a Joint Chief of Staff document I was reading about a year ago, it was talking about a revision from the a kind of 2001, 2007 or 2008 you know, program, which, which the main focus of which was um, kind of surveillance and control technology, to saying that they, they've learnt their lessons from all their urban, urban um, conflict um, encounters in 
in, in Iraq and Afghanistan that they, they need to know more about the culture of the other. Um, and so they, uh, what was going to become useful was um, psychology, uh, sociology, um, you know, cultural geography type work. Um, but it seemed very much, you know, in, in the framework of that document at least, that it was, it was very instrumentally, that was, that was, that was after very instrumental application of that kind of work to help them basically, it seems, build simulations. The Department of Defence mandated a couple of years ago that 50% of their R&D budget has to go on, it has to be robotics, it has to have robotics in the research grant application. So um, obviously that's the, that's the big, single, big, massive growth area now. So a lot of that kind of AI and automation and surveillance and link, linking up the kind of virtual space to actual activity, you know, control activity and so on is, is now kind of channeling into, into robotics. Um, so at the moment the, the sort of the established mode is your kind of operators sitting somewhere back in America running the robots around the world um, as, as well as people on you know, combat teams on the ground having their own personal, mm -hmm. you know, squad robots to do very narrow, specific tasks. But there, uh, the other document I was reading recently was about the future of robotics, and and the goal there is is this idea of <clears throat> they don't say out of the, they don't they don't say bringing people out of the loop, but they say putting them above the loop. Mm -hmm. So they're no longer, you know, operators working in sort of modified Xbox with modified Xbox kind of control systems. They're now going to be supervising uh, robotic combat operations. So robots will then be delegated, you know, uh, mission tasks, you know, like identify, locate, destroy. Um, and so, so long as the, the supervisor, you know, is kind of quite happy that the robot is not, you know, kill, killing yeah. <laughs> civilians. Well, it's solving that sort of age-old cybernetic problem of uh, the, the man in the middle of the machine. So is to kind of take the men out of the, the loop of the machine and make them just kind of a supervisor. Well, uh, well, that, that that's to live out, you know, Reagan's kind of dream from the 80s when he said, you know, these, these video games are going to train the future generation of American soldiers and so on.